A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. What does this proverb mean? Would you like to use it in conversation and know the story behind it? Straight from the horse's mouth. What is the figurative meaning of this idiom? What was its original literal meaning? All this and more coming up. Do keep watching. But first, please subscribe to The English Nut. Thanks. I want to sell my car. I've got a buyer too. He's ready to pay me immediately. But the amount he's willing to give me is less than what I'd hoped for. Should I hold out for a better deal? I could be the richer for it. Or I may lose this buyer and not get a better price later. Perhaps I should tell myself that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush and snap up the current offer. The proverb, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, is one of the oldest and best known ones in the English language. It tells us to be cautious, to not give up something we already have for something better that we may or may not get. It's advice to curb one's greed and not take risks. Originally, the proverb may have been a reference to falconry, where the bird in the hand was the falcon. It was certainly more valuable than two birds in the wild that you would perhaps not be able to catch. The phrase is first found in print in English, in an archaic form of English, in 1450 in the life of St. Catherine of Alexandria by John Capgrave. It is more secure a bird in your fist than to have three in the sky above. Another old-fashioned version of the proverb is found a century later in John Hayward's 1546 glossary, a dialogue containing the number in effect of all the proverbs in the English tongue. Better one bird in hand than ten in the wood. And now for some examples of how you and I can use the proverb in our everyday conversation. Don't leave this club just because you've applied to better ones. They may not grant you membership. A bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Are you sure you want to break all your fixed deposits and invest the money in a volatile share market? A bird in hand is worth two in the bush, you know. This candidate is good. I think you should give him the job. After all, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. If you hold out for an outstanding candidate, you may lose this one and end up with nobody suitable to fill the position. The proverb is a calc, meaning a direct translation of a Latin phrase. Plus valet in manibus avis unica quam dupla silvis. While the adage came into English from Latin around the 15th century, it likely derives from a 6th century BC Middle Eastern saying, a sparrow in thy hand is better than a thousand sparrows flying. This is one of the proverbs of Ahikar. It is from the story of Ahikar, which is considered one of the earliest books of world literature read all over the Middle and Near East. The protagonist Ahikar was a chancellor to Assyrian kings Sennacherib and Asarhaddon. When you've heard something straight from the horse's mouth, you've got the facts from an authoritative source, from somebody who would know the best or most about the matter. The likely origin of the phrase is from horse trading or horse racing circles. It's possible to gauge a horse's age by looking at its teeth. The expression long in the tooth also comes from this fact. As the horse ages, its gums recede, making its teeth look longer. As age is a determinant of a horse's performance, this is a reliable way to judge the animal's value. An early use of the phrase in a horse racing context is from 1861. Bell's Life in London and Sporting Chronicle used the term thus. Cesarovich, rank outsider, a raker to win, straight from the horse's mouth. By the early 1900s, the phrase started being used in a figurative way in other contexts. One example is from the 20th July 1900 column, This Busy World, in the Manchester Weekly Times. Summer has come at last and in full force. Thus, a sapient contemporary. 
So nice to be kept well informed, don't you know? If one hadn't the nimble copper to buy one's morning paper, one might have been left in dense ignorance of the fact. I had a bit of a notion of an idea of a suspicion that the caloric in the atmosphere was constructed so as in many ways not to resemble the depths of winter. But it's nice to be furnished with correct information straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Useful things, newspapers. Here's how you and I could use the phrase in conversation. The teacher is going on leave. I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Aman and Serena are getting married. I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Read his autobiography and you'll get the story straight from the horse's mouth. Do mention your thoughts on the two phrases in the comments section. Do subscribe to The English Nut on YouTube. Ring the bell icon too so you're notified about new posts as soon as they come up. Because you know, the English nut has the best content. And you heard that straight from the horse's mouth. I'm the English nut. Bye for now.